Hey, we have here today another integral from the UNSW Integration B from 2020. This was semifinal round one, problem one. We have the integral of x squared over x sine x plus cosine x all squared dx. Okay, I found this one really tricky and I had to try just about everything to make it work. The trouble is we really don't like to mix like x with trig functions. Like this right here, this is a problem. Even if we multiply this out, it's gonna be kind of a mess. What I tried to do was I messed with factoring. So yes, I could factor an X out of this and create a one over X here. That didn't really work. I also tried to bring the X squared into the denominator. That didn't really help me very much. I didn't really see a good U substitution because we don't have any trig functions in the numerator. So I don't know how a U substitution is gonna work. One thing I noticed, I just started taking derivatives of different things in different forms. And a lot of the derivatives came up pretty nice. And one of them was just this whole piece in here inside of the square root, which makes me think I want to try a u substitution. Let's see what happens when we take a derivative of u. So we'll try to force a u substitution of x sine x plus cosine x. Then when I take my derivative on this, first we need the product rule on x sine x. This is going to give me sine x plus x cosine x for the second term of this. And then the derivative of this is going to be minus sine x. But this was the simplification. I noticed that the signs are gonna cancel. And so our du is pretty nice because our du is just x cosine x dx. But, but even though this isn't too bad, we don't really have this. I would like to have that in my numerator, then this thing would simplify really quick. So then the next thing I did was try to force this to happen. So what we'll do is we'll rewrite this. I'll split this x squared into x times x. And I'm just gonna kind of make this up and multiply in a cosine x right here but I don't want to change it, so I'll divide by a cosine x over here, and then we'll just copy down this other stuff. So then we have our du right here. We have our u right here. And this is where I got stuck because then what do I do with this? I was thinking maybe we could create this value out of what we have over here, but I'm not sure that might just make a bigger mess, so I wasn't going that way. But then what I notice is because this part on the right, this is all easy to integrate and we can differentiate this, it tells me let's try to use integration by parts because we know we have an easy integral right here. So we'll just set up our DI table for tabular integration over here to the right. I'm gonna integrate this thing because I know I've already got it set up. So we'll just write this piece out and then we'll differentiate everything else. So we're just differentiating x cosine x. So then first we'll get a derivative here using the quotient rule. So let's see, that's just gonna be this formula that I'll write out really quick like this where g is gonna be the denominator and our f is gonna be just x. For our f prime g, x prime is gonna be one, so we're just gonna have g, which is cosine x. And then the second part, we're gonna have our f, which is x, derivative of cosine x for g prime, that's gonna be minus sine x. So we'll take the minus out here and write it as a plus. And then g squared, that's just gonna be the denominator squared, which is cosine squared. Okay, so that's our derivative for this thing. Let me just copy that in here. Okay, next we wanna integrate this thing over here on the right. Now, we really have this set up, but let me just kinda of do the u substitution over here just so we can make it clear. So this thing was gonna turn into du over u squared, which I can write as u minus two du. Do the power rule on that, we get minus one over u, or just minus one over this thing, x sine x plus cosine x. So then we'll just copy this over here. So then we have part of our solution right here on the diagonal. We just have to remember this minus sign up front. So let me write this, we're gonna have minus, just have x in the numerator, cosine x, and then that stuff. And then all this row here, this is just gonna be an integral to finish this. So when we do this, we have minus times minus, that's gonna be a plus. And then from here, I can multiply this all together and copy it in here, but just notice this right here, this is exactly the same as what we have right here, x sine x plus cosine x in a different order. So when I multiply this together, this is gonna cancel with this, and we just end up with one over cosine squared x, but that's actually secant squared x, and the integral of that we know is just tan of x. But with that, we can just write down our final solution. So we'll copy down this first part. We're gonna have minus x cosine x times x sine x plus cosine x, make it look good. Then we're gonna just add this tan x, put a plus C, and that's it. And one quick note on this, in the answer key for UNSW, they actually got a common denominator. 
I just don't think it's really necessary, but you could, you already have sine over cosine, so you could multiply through by this piece right here, and then you could get it all into one fraction. When you do it that way, you could see that it would actually be possible to use reverse quotient rule on that. That's actually one of the hundred things that I tried earlier. But if you do try it with quotient rule, you'll notice it's not that easy because somehow when you're taking the derivatives, all the trig functions have to go away just to get an x squared in the numerator. Anyway, I thought it was a good problem, really tricky one. Let me know if you guys had a different way of solving this. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.